Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jan Simon Müller, um, and uh, welcome to my uh, webinar about uh, static analysis tools um, and how to uh, use that um, uh, on Linux using open source tools. Um, you can easily reach me either um, by email or also on IRC. Uh, details are in the slides which will be posted. So today I want to talk about static analysis and first introduce uh, what that means um, and why we want to use it, what the motivation is. I will show a couple of uh, examples using either compilers or tools which are all open source. Uh, so to give you a feeling how uh, you can easily make use of these uh, in your projects. And at the end I'll show how to integrate that into your make files or integrate it with Git, ho uh, Git hooks, uh, for example, into your development workflow or into your CI um, loop. And uh, yeah, feel free to ask questions in the chat box anytime um, uh, or uh, raise your hand or speak up. All right, let's dive in. So what is static analysis? Static analysis or static code analysis um, basically means we do the analysis while the program is not running. So it is um, done by analyzing the source code uh, or doing the same uh, during compilation. Uh, we compare that then with a certain rule set. Um, the, the very first um, checkers basically did that with did look for certain patterns, right? Um, but uh, later on, compilers, which already do need to interpret the code, uh, got that functionality as well, because we already need to understand the code so we can apply and look for certain things there as well. So static versus dynamic. So dynamic analysis, means that we actually run the program. That's to, to be covered in one of the upcoming webinars, which I highly recommend. Um, so today we will deal with static analysis, which means we do analyze the code while it is not running. So um, in most cases, we either scan the source code for patterns or we uh, uh, have this process embedded into the compiler uh, and the compiler will uh, uh, parse the code and produce some sort of intermediate representation IR. And then we can uh, do the uh, code analysis. So that's the general, um, intro. So we do identify defects with static analysis before we run the program. Um, where does it fit? Basically, it fits um, right after you come up with uh, your new function, your new code. Um, then we can do the static analysis um, before we even submit the code or do some runtime unit testing. So basically very early. The dynamic analysis is then done your, usually during unit testing actually when you run the program. Um, and uh, it basically catches a different type of bug, bugs here. So um, both have in common that they will find errors um, in different areas. So 
the static analysis will find bugs, the dynamic an analysis will find bugs uh, at runtime then. Um, and uh, they are actually a nice complement uh, to each other. Uh, it's rather easy to automate the static analysis. Um, they are either separate tools that you can run on your code base, or meanwhile, they are even part of the compilers themselves. Um, so this is not far and not hard to add. Um, and you can do it very early in your development cycle. So that brings us to the motivation. So why do we do that? Well, of course, we want our code to be bug free. Um, and static analysis can find bugs early. And um, we can also find bugs that kind of I as a reviewer um, might not spot. Yeah, like 30 levels deep invalid access. Um, that's something you will likely not spot in a review um, when it's, for example, happening in a completely different C file that was touched. Um, so that's a, a quite a useful case. Um, and in, in that regard, it can easily complement the uh, peer review. Also, we can use static code analysis to comply with certain standards or guidelines. So there are um, coding guidelines like MISRA or the uh, ISO standard 26262 in automotive, um, um, for example. They enforce that we actually do code analysis to prove the code um, is um, um, bug free or meets certain standards. Especially uh, in certain industries, there is a requirement to do static code analysis and that's true for medical, uh, nuclear and aviation. Um, so there we have requirements in the standards to do static code analysis by default. So let's take a look what open source tooling we have and how we can make use of it. So in short, we have um, multiple types of tools available. Um, the simplest and first ones that uh, were done uh, use some form of string or pattern matching. Um, that works for certain uh, types of bugs, uh, but we have limitations. Um, the next type of um, analyzers were then added to the compilers because during the compilation, we already need to understand what the code basically does. So we can make better decisions um, instead of just looking for a certain pattern. Then there are tools that grew out of the Linux kernel community uh, specialized for the Linux kernel. And uh, there are tools that grew out of the user space. Of course, there are proprietary tools, but that's not for today. Let's take a look at the Linux kernel first. Um, essentially, it's a very big code base. And right now we are about the 20 million mark. Uh, 20 million lines of code. And this has always been quite demanding on the tools used. 
Um, I remember when we first tried um, things like scan build a couple of years ago um, on the Linux kernel. That was that was just taking forever, and um, yeah, we had quite some fun with that, getting it to work. Um, originally, um, the kernel has developed um, tools to help either the maintainers or the developers to check their code. Um, the simplest one is check patch, uh, which is merely uh, the tool for the maintainers to uh, check incoming patches for basically patterns. Um, then there is sparse. Um, we have also Coquinel, which uh, there will be a talk next week by Julia Laval. Uh, and there is Smatch, which is covered in two weeks. Now with the compilers, they did get uh, support for static analysis. Um, Clang was the first one to add this, but GCC with GCC 10 did add that capability now. So for user space, there is quite a large number of tools available. Um, I won't be able to cover all of them. Um, some are quite generic, aka the compiler integrated uh, checks versus uh, some are tailored to be used for finding security issues like flaw finders. So somewhere in that continuum, um, we, we uh, have quite a few tools that can be used. Now what's easy at our, um, for us to use? Um, if you are using GCC 10, then you can just enable minus F analyzer. This is uh, a new flag added in GCC 10 and it enables uh, like 15 uh, new warnings um, that will do static code analysis. Uh, Clang has uh, since uh, quite some time the scan build um, wrapper, and there is the uh, tool CPP check, which you which is a standalone tool, and we'll just take a look at these um, how they how they work. So CPP check as a standalone tool, you can just point at any of your source files and it will, um, it will show you any findings on the command line. So this is a pretty straightforward tool. Um, just CPP check and your source file, done. Now for larger projects, you might have to, uh, basically write your own script or adapt the make file as shown later on uh, to do that. The GCC 10 F analyzer call, um, which has been added uh, is now a very easy way to do that. Um, and uh, basically as combined with uh, W error, um, it is a pretty straightforward workflow. You can easily try this, uh, for example, on this website here. So the website uh, godbolt.org hosts um, a, uh, an online compiler. And um, if we skip out here, we can ease, we can just, um, check this out live by using a 
compiler version more recent than 10.0. And if we add our flags, we get this um, output here as well. So very straightforward. So here we are. How do I get to full screen again? Here. If you want to know more about uh, GCC 10 and the F analyzer, there's the whole blog post about the development uh, over here. CLang has support for um, doing such an analysis uh, for quite some time. Uh, it started out with, with Clang Tidy. Um, which will report the issues uh, found as well. Um, you can actually um, enhance that in a way that you get proposals um, back and so on. So that's quite a neat uh, tool. Now, this is kind of in the same range as CPP check, clang tidy, your C file, um, and there we go. There is a wrapper for your whole project that is using uh, LLVM and CLang, and that wrapper is called scan build. Basically, if your project has a make file and is, is using uh, $CC in the make file, you can use scan build. It will replace the compiler call with CCC analyzer and write out every finding. And in the end, you can even browse a web report in your browser. So this is useful for larger code bases other than our uh, 10 line example here, um, where you have a plethora of source files, then the view in the browser is actually very useful um, and uh, can help you navigate through the issues found. Now, this requires that your make file is using, well, the usual variables like $CC, $C flags, and so on. <clears throat> if that's not the case, or if that is, uh, if you have um, different compiler calls, um, then there is um, a successor of the scan build uh, tooling, and that is code checker. So it, code checker is uh, also a wrapper like scan build, but the method is different. It will intercept and lock the build calls. So we do not need to ch change the compiler used. Then we can analyze it and get a report out of it. Um, you'll find it on GitHub. They have Docker images and uh, more and more distros have that available. You also need uh, CLang installed uh, if you want to use it. It comes with a web UI that you can uh, fire up easily. There's a Docker container for that. And it can be used to store your results. So here's how that works. Um, you pull down code checker, uh, you compile it, add it to your path, and then you basically call this code checker log um, minus b. This is the build command. So make minus j something. And it will write out 
a file compilation.json. Sounds more complicated um, than scan build. Yes, but it does not change the calls to CC in your make files. It basically records all compiler calls uh, to be replayed. Um, and then in a second pass, we will analyze the calls uh, and run then uh, Clang Tidy and Clang Static an an uh, Analyzer. Um, it certainly takes longer than a plain GCC minus F analyzer. Yeah, because that is kind of built in. This is a two pass approach. Um, but it gives you a little more freedom because you do not have to change the original compilation steps. In the end, uh, when we have analyzed our code base, uh, we can then either uh, write out the findings on the command line, we can render them into static HTML, or we can go ahead and upload it to a built-in um, well, web server database that contains our results. Here's an example. So I did a sample run of uh, a certain code base. Um, so there are So he, here we see different runs. I just appended the date. Um, I just got some random code base I had in my fingers uh, on my desk right now. Um, and you see that the, um, there are 161 findings. Now, not all might be a real issue. This has not been fine-tuned. This is just the stock setup, uh, stock rules as is. Um, so not all findings might be uh, relevant in your case. But what I want to show is that uh, this allows us to find issues that are kind of some levels deep. Yeah, so either six or 11, uh, I wouldn't spot that easily. Um, so here we have a case where kind of certain conditions lead to, um, yeah, an object pointer being null. And you can now, yes? Will you be able to zoom in on this? It's becoming- Yes, high. sure, of course, of course. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so here in the code base, a certain condition happens um, and then we end up somewhere down here with um, a pointer being null. Um, I just took one example out of here. Um, you can fine tune these rule sets um, or what scanners are used um, then in code checker. There are configuration files available and so on. So you can also set up filters in here. So that is basically um, the continuation of the scan build um, capabilities, which renders out static HTML into um, a full-blown web UI where you can store your results, where you can navigate them, where you can identify the issues found. Um, so this is quite useful and um, we uh, ran that on, on a couple of different code bases and we found issues basically 32 levels deep. 
Now, we did not go into every one and checked um, if now that's the case, so we did not uh, fine tune our scanners used in that one yet. Okay, any questions so far? Yeah. Uh, I wonder if you could talk about your experience with understanding the results. Yeah, um, from, from code checker specifically or? Well, either way, whatever. Yeah. Either way. Um, yeah, um, it's a good point. So the, um, if you compare, for example, CPP check and, well, this is a given, this is a rather easy example. Um, it is kind of straightforward, but yes, uh, there can be uh, cases, um, where it's kind of hard to understand what does that mean, yeah. Um, but uh, especially the, the CLANG and CCC uh, F analyzer um, messages with the carrots uh, over here, they tend to be quite, um, spot on nowadays in the recent versions. That being said, if you look at these reports here, um, runs here, um, some of the, 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 here we have basically 161 uh, issues found. This is not fine tuned. Some of them might be due to um, a header not being properly included in the uh, analyze run. Um, some of, I, I agree, some of these are pretty hard to um, well understand in the first place. So you need to go through that and really look at it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Jan Simon, there is another question if you want to. Yes. Uh, what analyzers should be combined to find more results? Um, well, the, the easiest um, integration nowadays is basically either GCC10 or CLANG, GCC10 with the F analyzer. Um, that is now pretty easy to integrate and use. Um, if you use Code Checker, uh, there are already two CLANG based systems uh, in use. There are actually two analyzers in use already over here. And I'm sure you can extend Code Checker to do another one. Um, I think. Um, Given the um, um, the results between CLANG and GCCF an analyzer are kind of equal, pretty equal now, you tend to pick one of them. Um, then the question is if you add, uh, for example, uh, flaw finder, if you have any special needs regarding finding security bugs as well. Um, but um, yeah, usually uh, um, either one of the compiler based is fine and yeah, pick another one. Like, yes, uh, rats, um, yes. I'm, oh, sorry, oh, go ahead. Um, I have a question after you're done. Yeah, okay. Um, let's take a look how we can easily integrate that into our own projects. Um, so 
GCCF analyzer, as I said, makes it very easy. Um, it's one of the C flags you can add. And uh, with that, you are basically done. If your make file is already written to use uh, $C flags, there you go. Um, this is very easy. And if you want to enforce it, you also set a minus W error. And then it will bail out if F analyzer finds anything. Done. Uh, same is true for, for CMake and other build systems. Yeah, just add it to the C flags. Um, for CLang, um, you can use either um, Clang Tidy on the individual C file or you use Scan Build uh, on your project. Um, which will replace $CC on the fly. Um, and um, it will not change the C flex, but it will change the compiler call used. Or uh, one step further, use code checker, um, which means you do not have to change anything in your project. It will record the compiler calls, it will replace the, replay them and um, do the analysis with all options captured. So that's the kind of, there are different levels of integration here. Uh, it depends what you, uh, what your CI or what your project setup looks like. Um, CPP check can also be easily integrated in your make file as a separate uh, build target in this case. And um, over here with uh, XML output, for example. <clears throat> and uh, that can be one of the default build steps that happens. Beside make files, there is also another way uh, to integrate that. So if you use JIT, there is the concept of JIT hooks. A JIT hook is a mechanism to run, well, any code, shell script, binary, doesn't matter, um, on certain events. And one is uh, the, um, um, pre commit stage. So um, therefore, the well, script needs to be in the .git hooks folder and um, must have the corresponding name. And in our case, it makes sense to have that as a pre-commit hook. So before we uh, commit anything, we do run some action. Um, I prepared two examples. So one would be the um, pre-commit hook using scan build, just running essentially make in the tab level project wrapped by scan build. And if scan build finds any issues, it will exit with, my, with, with one. So um, which will then uh, trigger this exit one. And um, that means we cannot call git commit. So this will uh, uh, prohibit any code that does not pass scan build to be committed. A similar way um, is this. Um, that's now Git pre-commit hook using CPP check. It's a little bit smarter because it only um, does parse the files changed. Um, so that's actually quite nice uh, because we only care about the files changed. Now, now uh, choose your weapons. Yeah, either you do the full uh, scan across all the files or you just check one individual file. D 
difference is speed. Yeah, so this might be a very uh, easy bar, easy addition, um, whereas the, uh, the scan build or the code checker as a Git hook will take quite long to actually run and produce a result. Um, there's a question, any idea what's the false positive ratio for GCC analyzer? Um, for GCC analyzer, I don't have that number um, right now. Now here for the, um, for the code checker runs, uh, we have quite a lot um, of these 161 findings, which we can well either um, disregard or even say it's a it's a false positive. Um, um, in our project, we didn't fine tune that yet. Yeah, um, but I don't have numbers for you right now. So what, um, yeah, and Simone, uh, what's your experience with other uh, uh, checkers, CPP check and others? In general, it seems like there is a flood of information that comes out and it's very difficult to parse. So what's your take on how to do this more efficiently? Yes, um, all those checkers um, and uh, as I mentioned, there are even more rats, floor finder, and so on. They will uh, report a lot of issues to you in the first place. Um, so unless you start from scratch and, and add this right away. Um, so if you add it to an existing project, you will get uh, a big number of, of issues found and then you need to deal with it. Um, is there an easy way? Basically, no, you have to address them at, in, in, in some way. So either you say a certain, either you limit your scope to uh, certain uh, issues, um, so for example, in code checker, you can specify which one, which checker names specific issue types of issues you want to be included. Um, or uh, yeah, you define exceptions uh, for your project. Um, yeah, but in general, uh, besides filters or exceptions, Basically, the only way is to get to get through it, in some form. In some form. Thank you. Uh, that's. I mean, that's the whole point. Uh, they they need to uh, show and show the issues. Um, in general, the, the 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 tools tend to spit out a lot of messages, uh, which basically led to the a code checker in the end, because the output of um, CPP check on the terminal uh, or CPP check outputting XML, you still need to parse that and make something out of it. Um, so basically that led more or less to, to some system like, like code checker here, where you can browse and filter the results post process the results because yes in large project there will be plenty yeah uh, All right, um, so basically 
static analysis can help you improve your code base early during the coding phase, um, very early, even before you do uh, unit testing or integration testing. It is a requirement of ORIA standards, um, MISRA, ISO 26262 and other industries. Um, and it's actually quite easy to automate uh, or add to your, to your CI loop. Um, we started this um, automation for AGL, for example. Um, there we uh, do use Yocto as a build system and we added the bits and pieces to use code checker uh, with, uh, with the Yocto builds. Um, so that has been added in our, on our side. Um, what is left, and that's, uh, that's uh, yeah, one point is we would have to uh, um, fine tune the uh, scanners used, fine tune the output used, um, because yes, as, as Shua mentioned, you will get a lot of output and you need to dive through it. Um, essentially go through each in the at some point yeah okay any questions so i put up um some examples and um the uh, slides also on uh, on the github here and i have some more links and references to the Rice uh, checkers presented here as well. Um, John, yeah, speak up. Yeah, I had a question uh, about the static analyzer. So you're talking yeah. a lot about uh, these false positives, and I'm wondering, uh, these are probably because either you're using really bizarre uh, semantics with your functions or you just have a crazy coding style. Is there any kind of guidelines so that people can write software that will actually not trigger these false positives? Well, I mentioned that um, mainly because we started scanning already existing code bases. If you add this right away, um, basically, and enforce it, we basically will pass, right? Um, the whole point about adding this and using this is uh, to, well, in case of, um, um, for example, ISO 26262 is to, to enforce uh, coding rules as a standard or avoid such bugs, yeah. Um, so that's why we would put that in place. Um, the false positives, uh, yeah, that mainly is then in, in code bases where we did not enforce any coding rules. Okay, but that means that theoretically uh, all code uh, could be without false positives. I mean, it, yeah. I won't come into a situation where I want to program something and it's not possible because it will always uh, have a false positive or something like this. Um, I mean, I, I guess uh, it would be nice if I had like a real e example. So yeah, we, we had to change X, uh, Y, and Z, and then we were able to get rid of the false positive. Um, yeah, we, we are not there yet. We are adding it to, the, to our uh, CI workflow. Um, but we are in that phase where we start to fine tune the scanners and, the, uh, and start to work on the code base over at AGL. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the GitHub link, um, I'll, I'll paste that, uh, no problem. Uh, the slides will also be pasted on the, uh, um, on the LF page, so you will, um, you will get all of that on on the webinar page. So where is the chat window here? Uh, here, no, wrong, here. 
I have one more question. Uh, yeah. Do you have any comparison to the uh, commercial uh, product like uh, Coverly, etc.? Yeah, this is this is uh, yeah, hard question. Um, so I'm uh, I'm watching the uh, Coverly reports for uh, Rise open source projects uh, and see what is done there. Um, they have um, a little longer history. Um, um, but I, well, I focused on the open source tooling. So I, um, I kind of, I cannot speak about the commercial tools. If I may, um, I can add, speak to my experience with Coverity on Linux kernel. It is somewhat dated. Um, it does have, uh, it does generate a lot of false positives that you have to go look at and make sure. They do provide some hooks to disable some of the positives once you, false positives, once you analyze the error, you could kind of group them and say, these are the known things, that those are not issues. Mm-hmm. However, Coverity also suffers from a lot of false positives. Uh, keep in mind, my information is dated from probably 10, 12 years now. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other questions here? All right. Well, thank you so much, Jan Simone, for your time today. And thank you uh, to all the attendees for joining us. Um, as mentioned, the slides will be posted on the Linux Foundation uh, webinars page, as well as the um, video will be posted on the YouTube later today. Um, and we hope you join us for future mentorship sessions. Thanks so much and, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye.